Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. You may or may not know that I am one of the instructors for this year's Lightroom Virtual Summit. It's being held September 15th through the 19th and it's free to attend. You just need a free pass. In the description below this video, I'll have more information about the summit and how you could obtain your free pass. I'm one of several instructors teaching at the summit. Most of us will be teaching more than one class. One of the classes I'll be teaching is on advanced editing tools. More specifically, I'm going to give you tips and techniques on how to use lens corrections, the calibration panel, and transform tools. In today's YouTube video, I'm just going to take a little piece of this course out and show you what I'll be doing. More specifically, I'm going to show you how to use lens corrections to remove chromatic aberration. Now, again, in the description below this video, I'll have more information about the summit and how you could get your free pass. Now, we're going to be working on this image. This is the exact same image that I'll be using in the course in the summit. As you can see, it's overexposed. This is an unedited RAW file, so I'm going to do an edit on it first. So I'm going to open up the basic panel, and whenever I have an image that is either overexposed or underexposed, the first thing I do is I go to highlights and take those all the way down. The next thing I do is I go to shadows and take those all the way up. And again, I do that whether the image is overexposed or underexposed. If the image were underexposed, the next thing I would do is I would go to exposure and take that to the right. But because this image is overexposed, I'll take the exposure slider to the left. And all I do is eyeball it till it looks like I have a proper exposure. And it looks pretty good right there. The next thing I'll do is I'll get a white and black point. The way I like to do it is I hold the Option key on my Mac, Alt key on a PC, click on the white slider, and I'll get an entirely black screen. I'll move this to the right till I see some color come through. When I see that color come through, that means I'm blowing out those color channels. More specifically, I'm blowing out the highlights. And I don't like to blow out the highlights. So what I'll do then is I'll move this to the right till I see the color come through. Then I'll just back it off till all that color dissipates. But if we look a little closer here, you'll notice that I have the blue channel being blown out uh, right around the edge of the sculpture. That's indicating to me that I have a chromatic aberration problem. That's something I'm going to have to deal with. So what we'll do first is I'll get the white and black point, and then we're going to deal with this chromatic aberration. So again, what I'll do is I'll take this to the right till I see color come through, back it up until all that color dissipates. And for me, the way I like to edit, that's a perfect white point right there. Similarly, for the blacks slider, I'll hold in the option camera Mac, I'll can a PC, click on this, and this time I'll get a white screen or almost white screen. You can see a little color coming through there. If I move this to the left, you'll see more color come through. That means I'm starting to crush the shadows in those areas. You know what? I don't mind crushing the shadows a little bit. I like to have absolute black on my image to almost absolute white. So for me, that's pretty good. All right. Let's take a look at this chromatic aberration. I'm going to zoom in. The way I like to zoom in is on my Mac. I hold the command key and on the PC, it's control key. And I'm just going to kind of come into an area like right here. I could just draw out this rectangular marquee. And you can see this like line in here. And you can see this like purple line here. And I could even take exposure down just a little bit temporarily and you might better see it. That's the chromatic aberration. This is common if you're using a cheaper lens or if you're using like a super zoom lens like I did here. This lens was 18 to 200 millimeters, so it's a super zoom. And if you have your image like either overexposed or underexposed like I did here, I didn't nail exposure. So if you don't nail exposure and you're using a cheaper lens or a super zoom lens, you'll often get chromatic aberration. It's often purple, but sometimes it'll be green. It really could be any color, but it's most often purple or green. In this case, I have purple. So what you would do is you would go to Lens Corrections, and there's an actual checkbox, Remove Chromatic Aberration. So let me just move it down so we can see the color over here and then over here, and I'm going to check this box, and you'll notice nothing at all happened, and that's common. So we need to get rid of this chromatic aberration manually. So what I'm going to do also, though, while I'm here, is enable profile corrections. You can see that it, it took care of that. But we still have the chromatic aberration. So what you need to do is remove it manually. To do that, go over to the Manual tab. And you'll notice that this section right here is defringe. And it consists of four different sliders. There's an amount slider. The amount is for purple because right below that is the purple hue slider 
Then there's one for green and the mount for green. And then there's the green slider. Now we have purple here. What you could do is you could kind of come in here and just try to move this up and then try to like get the range correct. But there's a better way. Let me reset this. To reset this, just double click on the word to fringe and you'll reset it. The better way is to grab the eyedropper and then to just click on the purple. All right. So it'll just click right there. And you'll notice when I click, it got rid of most of it. It's still kind of down in here, but it got rid of most of it. Now, you could improve this a little more. You could come in here and start moving these sliders to try to like uh, refine the range. But might, what might help you is if you move either the purple hue or the green hue sliders is to hold in the option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC when you do. And you'll notice when you do that, you'll have like this black and color part of the screen. And what we're doing here is when we move it, we could see the chromatic aberration. And mainly what you want to do is you want to adjust this so you're just really affecting the purple, you know, the purple line. Because you don't want it to affect the sky. You don't want the range to be too wide to affect other colors. So what you could do is you could help refine it by holding in this this uh, alt option key to help you better see what you're doing and then if you want to see it before or after click on the eyeball but it's going to do the profile correction let me get rid of that so it's not popping in and out so we'll go there's before and after before or after you can see it just did it a little bit so what I need to do is I need to bring it out more like that and then you could do a before after before after before after you can see it removed it come in here there is before and after so i got rid of most of it you could come in here and move this to the right to get it even more and you could see down here what i'm talking about in here it's starting to affect the sky when i move this up too high so what you could do then is hold in that alt option key and then try to refine it so it's just grabbing that purple you can see just like that. That looks better. Got rid of the purple. You can move around. Now it's difficult because on the sculpture, you know, the sculpture is 3D. So you're going to have more chromatic aberration in one part of it and less on another. It's going to vary in color as it does here. So it's difficult to totally remove. But what you want to do is just try to reduce it. So you can see that... There's going to be a little bit of purple right here and let go and it's gone. But you can see now zoom back out by clicking on it. And, you know, it's hard to see on your screen when you're looking at the entire image. But I guarantee if I chose to print this, I would see it in the print because it just sticks out like a sore thumb. So it's something that you want to check for uh, all the time, really. And at least if you are using a super zoom lens or if you have an image that was underexposed and or overexposed and you had to fix that, look for chromatic aberration. You'll find it around the edges of things. And what I found is that like around trees and like green things, it tends to be green. But around other things like, like gray things or even white things, it tends to be purple. So you'll have to deal with it. Now, again, because I used the eyedropper, it just found purple. It didn't find any green. So obviously the green sliders weren't moved at all. But the same thing applies here. If you hold that Alt Option key in and you move a slider, you'll get this kind of weird screen that will show you, um, help you better like refine what is being adjusted when you do the defringing with the sliders. So remember that Alt Option key. Now you also um could come in and hold that alt option key for the amount slider and it kind of gives you this kind of look here and it might better help you refine it doesn't move as much though but it kind of gives you what is being affected uh, so wherever white is isn't being affected and wherever color is is being affected so you can see this corner of the sky is actually being affected a little bit so that's just another thing you could do is hold the, instead of holding the alt option key just for these two sliders, you could hold it for the amount slider as well. But overall, you, I got it reduced quite a bit because there's before and there's after. There's before 
and there's after so it does look a lot better now again this is just a very small part of one of the classes that i'll be teaching at the summit and there's going to be a number of world-class instructors at this summit you can see the names here and again in the description of this video i have a link to this website check it out you want to see what we're teaching just click this little down arrow and you can see what we're teaching for the summit what everyone's teaching and you get an idea if um this summit would be something that you'd benefit from. So check it out. Again, it's free to attend. There are VIP passes available. Um, the VIP passes, you could come back anytime, forever, and watch any of the videos. There's also freebies for VIP members, which you could check out uh, with the links that I'll supply in the description below. So thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.